what was emerging for me before I heard that reading was the word choice. And I want to start by inviting you to repeat after me, I have a choice. In this, mo- in this moment, I choose peace. In this moment, I choose peace. I have a choice. I have a choice. In this moment, I choose curiosity. In this moment, I choose curiosity. I have a choice. I have a choice. In this mo- moment, I choose openness. Okay, now we're going to have some fun. I have a choice. I have a choice. In this moment, I choose. In this moment, I choose. I choose peace. In this moment, I choose. In this moment, I choose. In this moment, I choose. Surprises. Surprises. I love it. In this moment, I choose. To listen carefully. In this moment, I choose. Okay, everyone think of your word. In this moment, I choose. And on the count of three, we're just going to say our word. And this is going to be so much fun for me. Are you ready? We can say it all at once. You can pause for a moment and bring your word in. But one, two, three. Isn't acceptance. Yes. And the reason that I'm starting with this today is I have been really aware in my own life, and I remember the last time I was here, I was standing here, and no rocks were falling on me, which I understand (laughs) has happened since then. So you know it's been a while because we had no mudslides or rocks falling. But I remember saying, unity principles are inconvenient. And I was like, where did that come from? And I actually sat with that for like two weeks. And the reason that came through is it's inconvenient because it's convenient when things are going well. Through my lens of perception. Oh, I love unity. I love these principles. There's only one presence and one power. And look how this is so abundant. I'm so abundant. There's so much love. Oh, but now there's all this other stuff happening. And when things fall apart, or when things don't go exactly the way I had hoped they would go, that's where I have the choice. And that choice is to anchor in these principles of love, openness, curiosity, compassion, all the words that we just said, or to go into my old way or my conditioned way of seeing the world. Oh, why does this keep happening? Is this ever going to get any better? I thought we were finished with this one. I thought this one was different. (laughs) And so here's the beauty. Nothing is more painful than 99% surrender. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is there's actually only one surrender. And that, by the way, isn't surrendering or yielding to something outside of myself. It's to recognizing 100%, or as the kids would say today, 1,000%, or 10,000%, or a million percent, which is all fascinating to me. But for the sake of this, we're going to say until I realize that I am 100% accountable for how I choose to see what's happening. In other words... The moment I call it something is the moment that becomes the reality of the situation, which is a really fun game because that means I get to decide that this thing that's happening is wonderful and it's happening for my highest spiritual growth. I like to try to say a couple of controversial things and I'm going to say one right now. Are you ready? Everything doesn't happen for a reason. Not the way we've been programmed to believe that that's the truth, that, oh, I got this diagnosis, that must mean this. My sister is going through a difficult thing, that must mean that. Although I will share with you, do you remember the Alaska Airline thing with the door coming off? Do you know that couple missed their flight that was sitting there? Oh, you're kidding. 
yeah, they missed that flight. There were the only two empty seats on the entire plane. So maybe sometimes things do happen for a reason. Maybe <laughs> they were aware of something or they had some kind of intuition or the traffic lined up just a certain way for them to miss their flight. But when we're living in that reality, we are continuing to live in the reality that the world is happening to us. And there's nothing wrong with that reality. The question is, what does it create? What does it create to believe if the world would just be predictable, if they would just stay alive, if they wouldn't get sick, if we wouldn't have conflict in a spiritual community? What? <laughs> in a spiritual community? We're not all in agreement on what we should be doing here? These are opportunities, as Pema Chodron says, when things fall apart. When things fall apart, it's an opportunity for me to go within and to say, am I going to choose in this moment to actually live these principles? Am I actually going to choose to know that there is one presence and one power active in my life? And therefore, the reason that everything is happening is always the same. I get to evolve and grow. Right? And that does not mean that there's a, puppet, a puppeteer orchestrating, I have an idea, let me have some traffic getting to unity this morning so that you can have the experience of letting go of your frustration. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is something happens, we create a meaning about what happens, and therefore, that's the experience of what is happening. So the great news is we have a choice. The not so great news is, we have a choice, <laughs> right? Because then I get to be accountable. But here's the key, and I want to be really, I think this is important because this is what's been happening in my life. And I love speaking on the last Sunday in January because I get to say, how are those resolutions going? <laughs> Haven't made any, right? I remember being at Unity in San Francisco in 1928 or whatever year it was. <laughs> I was kind of new in this whole spiritual thing and that's not exactly true, but I did a workshop and we did the vision boards. It was December, right? We're doing our vision boards. And by the way, vision boards aren't really vision boards. They're visualization boards, right? And I saw everyone cutting out the hot guy and the house and the car and the perfect partner and the wedding ring. And, and I had this flash of insight, this spontaneous insight that the vision board needs to be blank because it represents an absolute trust that whatever's happening in the world, I can choose peace, I can choose love, I can choose, and that to me is true abundance. Because as soon as I hook my abundance, which by the way is supposed to be the topic today, and I'm supposed to be talking about rule number two, which is an awareness that's a, that the, the universe is ever expanding. As soon as I say abundance is getting a bigger house, I'm not in the frequency of abundance because I'm implying that I'm not abundant now with what I have. And so sometimes life seems to give us that maybe they look like curveballs. So I've had, we've had some curveballs in the last year. I have. I don't know about you all, but I'm getting the sense that there might have been a few in the last few months for several people. A lot. I love coming into community and finding out what's happening with people so that it can come into the talk, right? Because that's what's relevant. What's relevant is what's emerging in consciousness right here with this unique collection of souls that will never be together in the same way again. In other words, this is the most fantastic moment that's ever existed. This is the most fantastic moment because we've all been called to be here for some reason so that maybe we can hear something like a blank vision board. So that I can walk away and think, okay, what am I choosing to believe about what's happening today in this moment? And what can I choose differently if I want to experience abundance? Because abundance is not outside of me and it's never anywhere but right here. And the one surrender, I don't know if I ever closed that little loop, there's only one surrender, and that surrender is to absolutely know that I'm an infinite being. To absolutely know that I came into the world as a spark of divinity, that the Big Bang is literally all of us as particles of God essence. 
That's a lot if we really want to feel into that. I am a particle of the universe. I am an ever-expanding consciousness that is not separate from any other energy in the world. To understand, not intellectually, that we are one, but to experientially understand, to understand that I'm an infinite being is abundance. And then it's not, there's no requirement of a getting there because I'm already here. And then the greatest paradox, as we know, that happens is I walk around with that frequency and that energy field. And then, yes, it does seem like the world starts to match that. It does seem like we're attracting things. But the truth is, all we've done is recognize what was already the truth of who and what we are. And many of us, and dare I say all of us in any moment, Let's level the playing field here. My job isn't to get up here and to say these principles, the principles mean that I've never experienced anything other than absolute abundance and awareness because there are moments. I had someone ask me, do you really walk around with an awareness that we're all particles of spirit and that we're all ever abundant and that we're one with each person and that life is beautiful and love is all there is? And my answer is yes, I do walk around with that but sometimes I forget. And that maybe is why we come together in community as a reminder that I'm not my story. I'm not my old beliefs, my BS belief systems. That reality lives in what I call pies, physical, intellectual, emotional, and spiritual, and it's all part of the human experience. Because we've all heard now we're human, we're not human beings having a spiritual experience, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. Well, I have something else to add. We have entered an era where we are spiritual beings having a spiritual experience. And when we understand, when I understand that I'm not, oh, I'm having this human experience, what does that mean? Oh, my pinky does this, or my. Because what we know to be true in unity teachings and new thought principles is that once I understand who I truly be, sorry for the grammar, who I truly be, everything changes. Everything changes, and it only happens right now. I remember somewhere along the line, one of my spiritual teachers, I think it was actually at unity, said, We don't grow spiritually. We grow an awareness of our spiritual essence. The affirmation is not to manifest something. It's to remember something. It's to recognize, to recognize, oh, yeah, that's the truth. I'm an infinite being. And when I anchor in that, in that spiritual room, that deeper understanding of who and what I am, then all of it can be welcome. Because if you're trying to live in a world that is predictable, you've come to the wrong planet. (laughs) And there are plenty of people who believe we choose to be here. And I think, well, that's an interesting choice. (laughs) I'm going to choose to be born on this place called planet Earth in the 20th and 21st century with all this stuff happening. Whoopee for me, me, right? (laughs) Whoopee for me, right? I am choosing to be here. Now, that may be true. Maybe we have a soul contract. You know, there's so much energy put on why we're here um, or where we go after we leave here or what happens after we die. And, you know, there's this great meme, and I, I know I've shared this before, so, for the, you know, that's okay. That's the beauty of being a guest speaker. I get to repeat myself more often because you probably forgot I had said it. <laughs> but there's this great meme. At, there, at, there's a spiritual fair, and there's a booth for past life regressions, and there's a long line. And there's a booth over here that says, I read your future. And there's a long line, and there's someone sitting in the middle, present moment awareness. No one's in that line. <laughs> right? Because the, the, the absolute truth is so profoundly simple that really Beth Ann and I or anyone else, because we're all teachers here, we're all, we all have this message to share, I could stand up and say it in one sentence, now is all there is. And not only now is all there is, but now is an inf- filled with infinite potential and infinite possibility. And now science is measuring this in the quantum field now. I choose this, boom, we see it. But what I want to spend a few minutes on here 
is how to have love and compassion for ourselves when we're aware that I know I can choose, but I'm not choosing it right now, right? I know that I'm abundant and I'm infinite. I know that I have infinite potential. I know that love is all there is. And for some reason, this person is just irritating me, right? And it really is about them this time. <laughs> she shouldn't do that. And I'm right about it, by the way. Right? And guess what? That's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing if I'm willing to look at myself. If I'm willing to look at myself without judgment, then it becomes a rich experience. Isn't it interesting that I'm choosing judgment? Isn't it interesting even though I know this community is so abundant? That if your rent in this space is $1,600, that is nothing. If it's $16,000, that is nothing. But for some reason, we might be choosing, oh, oh, we've had trouble in the past. We're at the past life. Let's go to the past life regression. I wonder what it is about my past life that I keep repeating this pattern around money. By the way, I'm talking about myself, everyone. I want to tell you right now, I'm talking about me right now, and I'm going to be willing to share some of that in a moment. Or I can say, wait a minute. Krishnamurti said the highest form of human intelligence is to see ourselves without judgment. And I would flip it a little, sorry, Krishnamurti, but say to see ourselves with curiosity. Because once I decide this is what it is, boom. And when we come together in a community and we build a little coalition, do you know what's happening? You know what's happening? Yes, it's happening. But do you want to join our, look what's happening. Wouldn't miss it for the world, right? And then that becomes the reality that we experience. I remember Reverend Maureen Bass said to me, if you, if you are continuing to manifest lack in your life, say, I am such a powerful creator. I keep creating lack and limitation. I am so powerful. I keep creating this same drama around relationships. I am so powerful. I keep creating frustration with other people. That's the beauty. And then it's one small little shift to, I'm so powerful, and now I choose this. Now I choose to understand at a deep level who and what I am. And if I understand, when I understand, who and what I am, then the conditions become less significant. Yeah. Because true abundance is to say, I am a spark of divinity. And I am going to have that spark sparkle wherever I go. And that sparkle, we're going to build a coalition around sparkling. <laughs> and then we're in a different conversation, right? But the beauty is, when I understand at a very deep level who and what I am, then everything else is welcome as well. It's okay to grieve. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to hurt. It's okay to repeat the same pattern for the 638th time, and it's only January 28th. I'm talking about this year. <laughs> We've done it. It's all okay. Because I've got this, and what I mean I got this, I mean the capital I, the essence of who and what I am, the whole and complete and perfect being that is at the core of every living being. And when I understand that, there's no process anymore. There's no getting there. There's just being here. And so my question for this community, because I can sense something happening, and I, you know, I have some information in my mind about what I've heard, but we're in a time of transition, right? Beth Ann said it feels like a homecoming today, and that's exactly how I felt when I walked in this room. I felt like, oh, I feel my spirit is home here. And what I mean by that is a room full of people dedicated to knowing the truth. And when we live in that spiritual room, it affects the physical. It affects the intellectual. It affects the emotional. 
when I believe I am my thoughts, it's a long, I was going to say, long something something process to changing that. I spent a decade in new thought trying to change my thinking. Maybe 20 years. Maybe 20. And then I realized that in an instant, we can make a different choice. We can understand at a deep level the very, very simple yet profound foundational principle. There is only one presence and one power active in the universe and in my life. To know that, to really feel that, and to be in that frequency, moment to moment choosing that, then grief is welcome. I don't have to go stalk someone so I don't have to feel the grief, right? Or grief is welcome, or unknown is welcome, uncertainty is welcome. Here, we, uncertainty becomes curiosity. Well, this is what I'll close with because I like this story. It's a San Francisco story, but there's a group of new thought. We'll say unity for the sake of this. There's a group of unity ministers. They go to San Francisco, and they're standing at the top of a hill, this three ministers, and they realize as they walked up the hill that they forgot to put the parking brake and curb the wheels, and the car starts to roll down the hill, and it rolls down the hill, down the hill, down the hill, and finally smashes into a wall. And one looks at another one and says, I can't wait to see everything great that's going to come from this. <laughs> and that's the choice. That's the choice. Am I going to choose to say, oh, God, why is this still happening? Or why are we still in this? Or what do we need to do to change this? Or maybe we need to have another workshop or another meeting. Maybe we need to do another visioning. Maybe, And in a moment, in a flash, we can say, or we can say, isn't this wonderful? Isn't it wonderful that we're in this time of infinite potential and infinite possibility? Isn't it wonderful that in this moment I can choose love, I can choose peace, I can choose compassion, and then from there I start thanking the sender? That person that irritated me, I can say, God, she's my favorite person. Because <laughs> I got to see where there was some stuckness. Thank you. It's not your words that hurt me. It's that you've touched an unhealed wound. I didn't say that. Don Miguel Ruiz said it. And I add to it, the wound is getting touched because it's wanting to heal. Everything is always bending toward wholeness. Everything is always a reminder of who and what we are. And then I have an opportunity moment to moment to welcome that in and to say, yes, I'm, I'm here for this. We're here for this. This community is strong, it's vital, and it's important. Because in the end, and I promise I'm really going to close with this, in the end, when I'm in the frequency of service, everything changes. And I don't mean I'm going to focus on everyone but myself so I don't have to feel, because that's not really service. That's a version of it I lived it for a long time. Why do I feel depleted? I'm loving and helping all these people. <laughs> Why do I feel so depleted? And then it's like, wait a minute. I'm here to be the lighthouse. I'm not searching for the boat. I'm just standing here shining. Unity of Ventura is standing here shining in this moment. And we are the beacon of light. We are the vibration of a message. And that is true service. Being in that awareness and allowing that to radiate outward, what if life could be really simple? I say it is, and the moment is now. So I invite you with that to take this moment, move within, and we take a nice deep conscious breath together. Ah, feeling into the frequency of gratitude. Grateful to know that there is one power and one presence, and grateful to know that this power is my life. God, love, light, source energy, all the words for this infinite possibility that exists as a divine idea that each of us is a particle of. It is the truth of my life. It is the truth of the life of everyone who's in this room at this moment and every living being on planet Earth and beyond. We are so grateful that we have come together here today to know this, to proclaim this, to be curious about this, a shift has happened. We are abundance. We are light. We are love. We are joy. 
And because we know this to be true, we now know that this frequency, this radiation, this radiance of love has gone outward into the world and a person somewhere across the world and across the cosmos for just a moment had an instantaneous flash. <sighs> Maybe I am okay. Maybe I don't have to fight. Maybe I can have courage to love again. This is the, the profound calling that we have said yes to today. So we release this now. We release this word into the infinite possibilities of the universe now, knowing that we have made a difference and we are so grateful. So we release this, we let it go. We let it be, and so it is. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.